How would you like to learn how to improve your game without an expensive boat, kayak, and without using anything except for what's on your back? Now I'm here in Pennsylvania. This is where I've been born, raised, still live here right in Northeast Pennsylvania. I'm here to tell you it's possible to become a better angler, catch big fish, from the shore without an expensive boat, without an expensive kayak, without having to get really far out on that water, just from normal shoreline fishing. My name's Chris, this is Lifeaholics Fishing. Come with me and I'm gonna show you exactly how to improve your game to catch better fish, bigger fish, all from the shore. Let's go. There's a rainbow behind me, two of them. Where else are you gonna get something better than that naturally than in Pennsylvania? All right, so quick introduction. My name's Chris. Welcome to Lifeaholics Fishing. What is Lifeaholics Fishing? Pretty much basic rundown, Lifeaholics is for those who are addicted to life and the better things that life has to offer. I myself am a recovering addict, turn my life around after some hard work, sacrifice a lot of loss a lot of pain but hard work dedication paid off and now i have found the better parts of life right now fishing that's what you're here for so let's dive in you want to know what i'm talking about when i say hey i can improve your game and improve your overall quality of fishing from shore fishing how can i do that well i'm going to show you right now let's dive in and show you my gear and then we'll go from there so for my spinning reel this is a American Hero rod and reel combo from Loose. Right now I have Easy Braid Spider Wire 10 pound braid on here. This is more finesse. I am using a Slim Shake Worm from Guggen Squad. Yes, I love those guys. They are inspiration for why I do what I do. I'm also more on the tactical bass inside and I've seen a lot of the YouTubers and I love all their stuff. But one thing I've understood and realized over the years is they are not from Pennsylvania, guys. Pennsylvania fishing, it's a lot harder than what most people think. We have small mouth, we have large mouth. A lot of people fish the river. Unless you're an old timer and know your stuff, it could be challenging for a new fisherman to get out, get on some very pressured water like Francis Slocum, Harvey's Lake, Moon Lake, just to name a couple. They're very pressured, very popular, but one of my best and my personal best is from Moon Lake. So it is possible to catch big fish, all right? So next off, this is my first bait, bait caster. This is 12 pound big game Berkeley mono. Just what they had, what I needed. That's what I have on here right now. This is on a proficiency six by six rod. I have right now my favorite, my just my all time favorite, uh, just little setup. This is the VMC Tokyo rig. Paired up with a Guggen squad bandito bug. This one right here is Okeechobee my all-time favorite seriously guys you have no idea how great it is now last but not least is my baby it's my precious this is my lose my xfinity bait casting combo from walmart as some of you guys probably have a lot of you guys have it i will be doing a separate review video for this teaching you guys a little bit more in depth of what i've learned about this but for now this is just a quick run through this has 50 pound power pro braid this is my frog and on my top water. This, you need to have a good one. So, those are my rods. Now, let's check my arsenal. It's my Plano, original Plano backpack. It was gifted to me by, by my girlfriend, but hey, you take it where you can, right? You upgrade where you can. On the outside, I have a small Guggen plus 3400 storage terminal tackle. Two outside pouches where I keep my drink. This has my water shoes in it. This I did myself. This is my camera bag. Very cheap camera bag from Walmart. Zip tied to it. This keeps all my extra batteries for my action cam, along with cloths and a bunch of other different just accessories for my chest mount and my side mounts. Whatever I need. Now let's go inside. There it is. You have five. Perfect. This right here, look at all these plastics. I have new plastics, I have old, I got extra line. Look at all that. Yes, I have a lot of Guggen. I have Kai Tech. I have swimmers. I have a lot of plastics I've collected over the years. Some flukes. I have swim baits, 
small stuff. I have tubes, I have my regular Sankos, a little bit of everything, but you fit it all right here in this mesh top. Now I'll be doing a more in depth review on this backpack much later, but for now, let's check it out. Top water, got my whopper ploppers, got some buzz baits, frogs. Next is my terminal tackle. I have some VMC stuff, my weights. I got some bobbers here for more panfish fishing. I have drop shot stuff, swim bait stuff, a lot. I got my crank baits. These are all custom. I have one Guggen squad in there, some uh, random Rapala, but the rest right here, you gotta check these out. These are from Love the Fight Lures. These babies are custom. Right there, you can see his initials are on the bottom. Right now, he's not currently really making them, but I have hope that he will be back. Skylar Caudry is his name. I believe it's that, that's the right way to pronounce it. Caudry, I'll have to check it out. I'll link it in the description. Another, some more random crankbaits and other stuff, lip lifts. And then last but not least, my skirted stuff. Anything, my spinners, I have some frogs. Anything that's skirted jigs, some smaller spinners, a little bit of everything. As you see, I fit a lot in here. I have some trout magnets. I have my thermometer here. Check the water temperature out when it's early season yet. I have flashlights, more sharpies, my extra waterproof cam for underneath water stuff. There is a lot of stuff in here. And all this is carried on your back. You might think it's really heavy. It's really not. I've trekked through a lot of places with it. And you see it's really comfortable. It's got the extra padding and everything. That's my everyday backpack. So let's fish a little. All right, so I'm gonna fish and talk as, uh, as we do this. I'm gonna number the tips as we go along. And then if it gets too dark, or if just not getting anything, we'll get back to my house and I'll really dial down those tips for you to go along with it, all right? So first and most important tip is know where you're fishing. That is a really important tip. Know where you're fishing. If you're fishing the river, oh, I might get a bite. Oh. Now, if you're fishing the river, then you know it's gonna have that fast current right it's usually always dirty especially around here it's very rare you have crystal clear water visibility is about maybe two feet so right there you know your colors are going to be black blues stuff like that now don't just get out there and start throwing stuff willy-nilly people just think oh i just spent 20 dollars on this floor so it has to work that is not the case not at all especially a place like this on the river Definitely not. Now, some people will say, you know, do we really need the advanced stuff to catch, you know, crazy amount of fish? No, not at all. To this day, and I think I speak for a lot of fishermen out there that'll say their best, best lure probably is the Senko. Stick bait, dinger, mine is the Yum Dinger and the Guggen Lunker Log. They've been my absolute best <laughs> lure. Now I have crankbaits right now, like I said, I got the uh, VMC on. But at the end of the day, sometimes you just need to throw that 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 worm and it. what's wrong with it, it works. Now, if you want to do something different, plenty of ways that you can do something different when it comes to the worm. Still do a Texas, Texas style. Texas weedless, obviously people, some put it weightless, some say Texas weedless, you know, many different names and uh, different versions of it. Take a nail, little nail, put it in the tail. Right as you're same, as you're doing your same thing. When you go and cast it out, what it's going to do, putting that nail in, it'll give it that little bit of weight to get it down to the bottom, but instead of it just dropping like a normal Sanko would, it's going to shimmy backwards. Giving it that little extra action is going to make it different from the rest. And that brings me to tip number two. Be different. 
Now, I'm not saying throw crazy saltwater stuff in freshwater, no. But be different, change up your cadence. Something as simple as that could really make a huge difference for you. Change up your color. Don't be afraid to change up colors. I don't know why people are so afraid that like, just that little bit of change, it's going to make the huge difference. Oh, I just had a fish and it seemed like I got caught, but that was a fish. <laughs> that was crazy. That was a small guy though. I know that was a small guy because right now, like I said, I keep mine. I know you can see it now. You can see my hook. I bring it right up and skin it. Cause sometimes that's, you have too much plastic to get through and just skinning it will still keep it weedless. It's still not exposed, see? But it'll make a world of difference when you go to set the hook. Now me, I did not know that was a fish. I was more worried about talking. I thought it was a rock cause it did feel stuck. So let's try that again. Try to get that guy. Now right now, just to give you an idea, the temperature out here, still this is eight o'clock at night and the temperature is still currently 86 degrees. That's hot for Pennsylvania. Down south that may not be, but for up here, oof, that, that's hot. Now people think that because it's really hot, the fish aren't going to bite. Now on the river, the river, the water isn't gonna be as warm as it will be in a lake that's still. The river is gonna be a little bit cooler, not a lot, but still cooler. Now, if you're uncomfortable, then you know that everything around you is also uncomfortable. The fish, they're definitely going to be. Now see, sometimes I have a problem like this. You think that you got a fish, but really, it's just stuck. One eternity later. I want to have some fun first. I absolutely love this. I want to see what it could do. It's nice and shallow. Might do well, especially down here in the river. Bam, whopper, whopper. How's it going? So let's try the whopper plopper, see how it does. Go from there. Now this one's custom. This is from uh, Love the Fight Lures, like I was putting earlier. It'll be down in the description for you so you can go see it. I don't think that Skylar's making them right now or really producing a lot, but I'm sure if uh, enough of us get out there and uh, put in orders, I'm sure that he'll, uh, he'll start back up. Now, of course, I'm going with the solid color, chartreuse, tiger color. Okay, this is one of his uh, his customs, which is called Beel Juice, which I thought was awesome. Now I got this on my 50 pound braid, and I was keeping a nice steady retrieve. Definitely just had to jump right out there. Sometimes, here's another tip for you. Dial down your size. Sometimes there might not be monsters around there that could actually take a big lure like this. Now, yes, small guys, if they're hungry enough, believe me, you guys have all seen pictures. I, I, I've seen a bunch. Little, little fish going after a big lure. So dial it down, go to a smaller size. Don't be afraid to go smaller because even the smallest things can catch big fish. Ned rigs, perfect example. Tip to help you save more with your Ned rigs Keep super glue on you in your bag, in your tackle. What you do is right before you take your Ned rig and put it all the way up to your top of your uh, jig head, your mushroom head, whatever is uh, your preferred uh, setup, put a little bit of super glue, crazy glue, right there at the tip and then stick it on. You'll have no problems with it ever slipping down on you or you'll losing your bait, especially when it comes to the Z-Mans. I think it's gonna be my last cast with this guy and then I'm gonna switch over. This time I'm gonna go really slow with it. Oh. 
Oh, almost. See, that little, just going a little slower. But he missed it, he just grazed it, so. We're gonna still finish it out. That's an important tip too. All we, oh, another one, almost just, whew. Almost just smoked it. Now that one I know I got a cam. Now when that happens, now we're gonna go even slower with it. Even slower. And we're even gonna put the paws in too. Ooh, there it was almost again. Now we're coming up to the second one that hit it. We're going slow. Let's do the stop and pause. Stop, pause, stop. Oh yeah, pause and go, pause and go. Now that was actually really close. Thank you. Always make sure your hooks are clean before every cast. And definitely one big tip with the whoppers, always make sure that this back here, that right there between the, the plop, the propeller and the actual lure, make sure that that's always clean. Because getting too much built up into that will ruin your lure completely. There we go. Oh, a little guy. See what I tell you, a little guy. Ooh, and this is one of those guys I was actually wondering about. Oh, nope, that is a small mouth. So, small mouth, got it. All right, not a bad. And there we go. All right, All right. so. A little feisty guy all right there you go nice little small mouth he's got the red eyes actually it might be a little premature uh rock rock bass as well but uh we're gonna get him back in there and let him go let's go go get your bigger brother right all right buddy here you go Oh, just got, again, he just got smoked. Now it's kind of weird. I was here in the distance over here to the left. There's another gentleman fishing. Now it's the first time I've really seen someone else fish on this area. But he's actually net fishing. I've never seen that on the river before, so I gotta give him mad props, man. Definitely, I didn't see him catch anything. But seriously, mad props for that. That's definitely something different. Give them mad props for uh, going that fast. I know you guys can hear it. But on the river, there's so many different rocks, traps, it's crazy. But these guys might have just helped us because with that weight coming through, they pushed some of those fish to shore. So let's see if uh, see if they did us uh, any justice here. All right, guys, so I had no more luck with the whopper plopper, nor did I have any luck with my finesse rod after that. To save time, I just packed it in for the night and head back to my house but before we get to that footage and those extra tips and tricks you guys are here for here's a sneak peek at what to look forward to in the future videos from lifeaholics fishing thanks for watching guys
All right guys, so we're back here at my house. Before we dive into these tips and tricks though, if you're liking what you're seeing, definitely hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more of my videos in the future, hit that subscribe button and definitely the little bell right next to it. That way you're notified of all new content that I put out on this channel. Also, below in the comments, if there's something that you're having trouble with, whether it's a location or a product or a technique, or if you would just like a product to be reviewed or checked out by me, please leave a comment below and I will definitely be responding as soon as possible. Who knows, maybe one of my next videos will be based on one of your suggestions. I'd love to hear any and all feedback and thanks for watching, now let's dive in. Okay, so going back from what I was saying earlier, environment, definitely know your bike. Now, I know that could be hard for a lot of you, especially if you're going to a new location that is in the middle of nowhere, a reservoir, or maybe there's just never been anybody there at all. So what do you do? Well, you gotta check it out. Definitely explore. Explore before casting. Check out the wildlife around. See if there's bait fish. See if you can see panfish coming by the shore. See if you see crawfish. Seeing that sign of life knows that there's definitely gonna be fish or some other wildlife or species in there. Whether it's bask, musky, pike, especially in Pennsylvania, you really never ever know what could be out there. Next is going back to what I was saying about being different. Now being different can mean anything at all, okay? Now I'm gonna show you some things that could really help you change up your normal baits that you already have to improve yourself on certain waters especially waters that are pressured and really require you to be different. So first let's go with the color changes, what I was saying before. Now murky water, rule of thumb. When you're in muddy, dark water, very, very low visibility, you wanna go with solid colors. Nothing translucent, you wanna go with something black, black blue, you wanna go with maybe watermelon with red flake. You definitely want to stick to those really solid colors. That's why you saw me using the Whopper Plopper with the solid white with the chartreuse, especially with smallmouth. Smallmouth and chartreuse is just killer. They always go for that chartreuse, so that's why they, you always see it just popping out at that. So now that you know what you're doing with your colors, if you choose your black and blues, whatever have you, it doesn't matter whether you're using a spinnerbait, whether you're using a Texas rigged, how to change it up. How do we change it up and make it different than everybody else on the water? Now let's go with say just something like easy to do it as a swim bait. Check this out. This is on a VMC weighted weedless. So that way it gets down to the bottom. I like it being able to get to the bottom and also it helps drag it across the bottom. Well, what I've done, this is a rage tail swimmer that normally looks like that there. Just that nice normal okay so i've taken it put it on the vmc and what i've done is i've added some skirt tails now this goes with another tip you're going to hear me say this a lot repurpose reuse always whether it's your plastics broken lures old lures lures you find at the river at another location it doesn't matter you're always going to come across stuff it might be rusty but some stuff might be able to get cleaned on it like skirts now with this, in order how to do this, now you see it, I just did it basic just for the video, just to show you. Now I did this while it was still on the hook, in the hitchhiker, all set up. That's how I've done it. Now to do this, it's really simple. Come to another tip. Keep a sewing kit on you, in your bag, tackle, in your car, because you never know when you might need a thread, or especially when I was about to say, a needle. Now, hopefully you can see this. That is the regular needle I'm using. It is a wide-eyed, so that you could put quite a bit in there. Now, right now, see, just for this purpose of this video, I have threaded through three little extra jig skirts that I have. These I've actually taken off of my frog that I modified that I'll show you here in a bit. Simply cutting those off, don't throw that away, keep it. Now all you need to do, making this really simple, show you, find this next spot that is not already covered with your skirt. Right now for me, this is gonna be right here through the top. Now I space them out a little bit differently just so that way it gives it more dynamic and a little bit bigger profile. You literally just put it right through, right down, 
and pull all the way through, not too hard so you don't pull it right out, but bam. Then you're able to pull it back through a bit, fluff it up, and check that out. You just got yourself a skirted jig, pretty much, on something you're already using as a regular swim bait. Now, instead, when this goes through, when it hits the bottom, it'll have just the same effect as a skirted jig, except now as it comes through the water, it's going to puff out, give it a little bit more fuller definition. So it'll have a little bit bigger, a little bit more presentation, but a better profile as it's going through. Now you can do this on anything. If you're uh, say like personally, I'm on a budget with everything. I rarely have money for myself. So all my stuff I have to repurpose or I find or I'm gifted, whatever have you. I can't always afford to go and keep constantly buying football jigs or skirted jigs. So what do I do? I repurpose the ones I have. How do I do that? Buy stuff like this. Take the skirts off or I'll buy one with two colors, like a black with a chartreuse, a black or a blue. I'll take the blues out or I'll take the blacks out and just use the blues, give that different color. And then I use those extras I pulled out for stuff like this. All right, so let's go on to my next tip. All right, so this tip is more for storage saving for just making your life a little easier in the long run you also save you some money now i personally love wacky rigging personally right now i don't have any o-rings that's how much i love it i use them a lot sometimes you're you know, when you get hooked you don't always save that o-ring but instead of going out and buying a really really expensive o-ring wacky o-ring tool some of them you know you guess you could find five ten bucks they don't really last long Instead, go into your office, go into your school supplies where your kids are, grab yourself a Sharpie. Now this right here, as you see, is just regular Sharpie. I cut it right there. Watch this, perfect. Now this is a yum dinger. This is a regular five inch. Stick it right in, bam. You're able to put it all the way into the middle, right where you need that O-ring which if dynamic, uh, if I remember correctly, it's always the first or second knuckle right past the, mo the egg sack, whatever you'd rather call it, right there. You just bring your O-ring up and over, bam, and it's on. Before you leave, so that way you save time, you're able to already load this up with O-rings, have a bunch on here. Or if you don't wanna leave them on here, you're able to go ahead, slide all the way on here, till you get to this, you can crack a part off on this, bring them up and put them under. Now I suggest leaving this on because as you see, it has that little stopper. So what it does when you bring it all the way up and put it back down, bam, you hold it in and you hold it in place until you're ready. Then you just put it on, worm it and boom, right on and done. So there's that one. Next, always repurpose. Um, I can't say this enough, repurpose. This, I found this on harvey's like i got hooked up just regular retrieve i was using a shaky head and i ended up reeling in someone else's line and found this now the plastic was torn this is kind of rusty beat up now this person was using a spinner with a swivel bam you just got yourself extra o-rings you just got yourself more o swivels and you also got yourself a new blade now this you could easily clean up get the rust off of it's not that hard steel wool etc but what you have to do is take this little part and then get yourself a hitchhiker which a hitchhiker is what is called pretty much on the shaky heads those little springs that you see that you screw on your baits to that is called a hitchhiker so you take one of those hitchhikers now you just take your uh your swivel and your new spinner that you found take that and then put it into a tail now this you could either cut it cut it off which that'll lead into my next tip too when you cut it off and use it differently bam you just put that in and you just gave yourself a whole different profile as you're bringing it in this will flash now you don't need to throw it out and bring it in like a swim bait no just still do it as a texas rig but as it's going you're giving it a little bit of vibration and the extra flash making it more visible especially muddy water giving it that extra profile or that extra visibility will make it 
better ratio for you to get striked, whether it's a reaction or just regular bite, you're improving that right off the bat with that extra spinner. All right, so next is back into my next tip, which my next tip is, it might sound pretty self-explanatory, big tip, even when you're not on the water, does not mean you still can't fish or do something that's going to prepare you for fishing. Whether it's practicing in your yard, practicing a new technique like flipping, pitching, just bought a bait caster for the first time. Practice in your yard first. Don't be afraid to do that. Tie on something to your line that's equal weight to your lures and just go and give it a cast out. Even give yourself a, just a weightless or a Texas style bait and just throw it around your yard. There's nothing wrong with that. Practicing before is going to save time when you get out on the water and definitely give you more time catching fish than you are worried about dialing in a new technique, dialing in first time using a bait caster, or being unorganized looking for everything. So this brings me to bobby pins, safety pins, however you want to call it. This is going to double up for a few different things, okay? Bam, you have all of your swivels, my VMC drop shot hooks that have the uh, O-rings on both sides. I have regular, uh, the regular ones with the clasps all on. I still have ones with clasps without. And then it doesn't, you don't just need it for this, but you can use it for your big stuff too. Keeping your hooks in line, keeping them in order. Great way to keep everything organized, especially when you can't afford those really, really nice trays that are flat. Here's into the next tip of why having a safety pin is so great. So when you're out, you're fishing, all rough and about, you never know, you just throw it in the car, throw it somewhere else, it's never know what could possibly happen where maybe you snap a guide, one of the eyelets. Well, having those safety pins for your hooks or anything else keeping it organized will come in handy for this reason. What you do is you take, I see you see that, you take your safety pin, bam, bend it right at the end, keep it together. You could cut it here if you'd like, but keep it together, bend that part down and then look. You should be able to see that. You just got yourself a replacement guide, whether it's up high, low, you put it on your, on your pole and then either tape it or like I said before, always have super glue or crazy glue on you. Put that on, bam, you're back in the water in no time. Takes you not even five minutes to repair your pole out on the water. Now I'm gonna be wrapping these up because it's already against the end of the video. But as you see, I wanna give you a taste of some of the stuff that I have to offer. I am no professional angler by any means, but I have researched quite a bit. I learned a lot of bit. I teach quite a bit of people out on the water around the area. And I've met a lot of fantastic guys out there that are just struggling with certain things that I was able to supply my knowledge to and help them out a little bit. And I have personally seen them put these to, to use and bam, catch themselves some fish. So I'm going to be putting videos out, especially a lot more. I have a lot more modifications, techniques, that you can definitely benefit from. And also I have quite a bit of product reviews to put out on different things that I've learned, some backdoor stuff that people don't really know about because they're either cheap or unheard of. Definitely be looking out for that. Now, one of my last tips. Now you, you're out, you're hitting the rocks and say you completely smashed off your bill on a jerk bait or a regular crank bait, anything like that completely cracked it off. Well, in your trays, I know me personally, I have so many extras of these, so many. I keep a couple extra in my bag, whether it's just in one of the slots with my lures or just in an empty slot, keep one on you. Cause if you take something simple like this and then use your scissors and cut it to that right there. You just gave yourself a replacement bill right there. And you can do this actually with quite a bit. This gives it that just a little, it's going to be a little flexible, but when you're trying to save money and you don't have a lot of these, cause these are expensive, they really are. That right there can save you. Whether it's at home, you could replace when you get home, cut it out. These are so easily cut. 
I use them with my braided scissors from Rapala, just cut them right on the water at home. Takes five, 10 minutes tops. Crazy glue, super glue, bam, you're back in action with your favorite lure, so that way you don't lose it. All right, so favorite way to do this for your plastics, right there. You have a bunch, not all of them have that, but shower curtain ring, open it up, bam. All right, guys, so that's it for now. I still have so much more that I really wanna show you guys and get out there so that way it helps you and gets you more fish in the long run. Now, if you're looking for my next video, which will be in the next couple of days, I'll be posting one to two a week. I'm always gonna try at least one, but I might even have that bonus third or fourth. I'm gonna be doing a vlog type series and this. So thank you for watching. Definitely check out my website, lifeaholicsanonymous.com. But thank you guys, have a great night, and see you guys on the water.